Yo, what is good people? Welcome back to the Nerd Crate and welcome back to a new review. Today, finally, a figure I've been waiting for quite some time. The 2019 New York Comic Con exclusive of Cybersmoke. It's been in the post for quite a while and then it uh, was stuck into customs, I guess, and uh, it's not quite perfect. No blame to the man responsible getting this to me. Uh, Many thanks to DJ Peluso from the Realm of Collectors. Much obliged, dude. And Dan McMahon. So, my good friend Dan of Sentinel Bay Reviews for, uh, uh, yeah, forwarding the request. So, uh, everything went well, trustworthy dude. Uh, super appreciative. Um, so, another hole uh, stuffed in the collection, so to speak. Man, I'm super stoked today. We just launched the Collectors Bay. Dan and me, our little, uh, brain love child so to speak where we want to try and do other things um, unfortunately for my international viewers this one will be a solely german channel because we said we want to combine our our power so to speak um, but he's doing it in german i was doing it in german but um, we want to do it fully in german because we will have my con over there too occasionally he will have a few reviews and um, I'm just using this here to kind of, you know, a little bit of a news bit, clean it up. Because it's Saturday, you see this today, uh, a little bit different. Tomorrow, another point where I'm stood, I will have my first edition of uh, Crate Hangouts. So uh, I will have Jeremy Bennett on there and we will talk a little bit about uh, different things. How we started, Transformers Love, um, how to get into Storm Collectibles. I did it, he wants to, he loves those things. And I will absolutely, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think we will have an absolutely cool time. So um, yeah, that's so far about it. Um, also a little heads up, that's the last and we will start. Um, Voice of Kaon will then be in the future on the collector's bay. Just so you know, in case you are English native speaker and you do understand German by chance of a family member and you want to watch, um, we already put out a little disclaimer that it is wandering over there. If you want to watch the last episodes, you will find the playlist over there. Uh, link to the new channel in the description below. Also, you see the logo down here, so uh, there's no way you confuse it with anything else. But um, that's it for so far, guys. So uh, let's get into the figure, man. I'm looking forward to it. Gonna show you a few. Uh, or, or two uh, possibilities of attaching smoke. Um, my version with the, with the wool, you already see it a little bit wobbling over there, and the original and the whole bit. So let's start off with the packaging as always. The usual cool library style of Storm Collectibles. On the front, smoke as a, uh, as a half picture. Wrap around to the right over, we have Mortal Kombat smoke, uh, partially varnished with a window box. On the inside, the usual inlay, which is this time surrounded in uh, purple, H17 Plus and stuff on the front as always. Um, wrap around, like I said, continues to the right with Mortal Kombat smoke. On the back, then the few action shots at always, as always with the biography and the effects and uh, also with, uh, with a few uh, accessories, uh, copyright and so on so and so forth. Further rotated to the left, looking at the uh, at the left side now we have a partially varnished uh, picture of smoke in his uh, signature winning pose. And on the lower side we have Bluefin sticker, Model Combat, and on the top also the Model Combat logo comes as always. Uh, I think uh, those packages are great. They are now the same, of course, all the time, but um, it's the same style. And like I said, when you put it into the into the shelf, like a shelving unit for, for uh, preserving the packages. You either have this side or this side. It's a cool library look, I dig that. So uh, with everything else, articulation, accessories and so forth, let's just, as always, head into the top down. And back we are. And as you see, a whole lot of accessories. With this new sculpt, with this new mold, there were quite a bit of new things. So uh, one thing you should see already, I have my smoke effects on there. We will talk about that in a minute. Just wanted to show you first. This is of course the 
delivery state. So let's just get the instructions as always out of the way. The usual great print by Storm Collectibles, unfortunately without color, I don't know why. Um, we got all the accessories put in here nicely so you can see what you have to do with the smoke, with the uh, spear, the bomb, with the little grappling arm, yeah, grappling arm on a shoulder. And that's about it. Let's just start with the usual hands. We get three pairs all in all. We get uh, two more relaxed but still posing hands. Uh, they are nice enough with uh, silver paint on top of it with some joints painted in there. A little bit of a paint bleed um, but the same goes for the gripping, for the tighter gripping and for this one the, l the little bit of a lighter grip. Um, like you see sculpted well enough. They look nice. So um, this is the usual Storm Collectibles quality and they attach the exact same way as always. You pull off the pack. This is a little bit loose, but you just pull it out and put it back into the arm. Attach the hand. Since this is hard rubber and these are soft rubber, you just push it in. No problems. Next up we got the smoke effects, which uh, also come in two. Uh, which are nice enough. The uh, ones for human smoke were little, I don't know, let's call them gauntlets and you put them over the legs and forearms. These ones are quite different. You raise the arm and then you try and pry or jack these bits right here below the armor, which doesn't work too well in my opinion. I always have a feeling I would break something um, and it looks like he has a weird thing of body or door going on. There's actually something my good friend Dan, not Dan but Dan, put me onto and he's quite right. So um, what, what I recommend, what I do and what works for my human smoke is the following. So I always take this Filzwolle. This is felting wool and it works quite well for, um, for those effects. I use those for, for Armac, I use it for Sub-Zero and Smoke 2, rain also, white for a cloud where the uh, lightning comes out. And you just pull out a bit that you want. And what I found pretty helpful with smoke is essentially the way the real accessories work. So you pull them over the arms, twist it a little between your fingers like some kind of uh, Velcro that's also used by Hot Toys. I call it magic tape. And then I use this budger and I just pry a little bit of the wool inside the armor and this way you have the smoke effect and I think this works a little bit better and you can attach it on the legs too. Um, I like this more. When I've done this review and when he's going back into the shelf um, I will make it this way. Just so you know that's what I use, that's what I recommend and I think it looks way better. Next up for accessories come his four bombs. You can uh, play it out pretty much as if they are dropped from his chest. Um, interesting color. Interesting color. I hope the camera picks it up. We have a yellow kind of metallic, a little bit of a golden-like color all over it. Looks nice. Again a little bit of paint bleed on those black parts here, um, but nice enough silver paint on here. Um, I see more and more things with paint bleed actually, which is, which is not too cool. A um, little bit of paint bleed, but um, they're actually pretty heavy for what they are. I think they are, they seem to be rubber throughout, throughout or something. So uh, they're nice. Next up we got his arm. Uh, very cool sculpt on the whole thing. On this here actually the paint is perfect. Uh, looks a little bit of dry brushed here. It's all uh, a little bit darker silver, somewhat um, 
more gunmetal oriented, but uh, it works nice enough. Uh, we got a joint here, we got a joint here. The little gripper actually works. We have a joint here that's uh, all quite stiff, that's nice. And you just attach it in the way that you check out which one is actually crooked of these attachments uh, to the smaller side. And that way you attach it to these four grooves here. You just really just pry it in there. And this way he looks like this. In combination with that arm we have this little bump here. It's for his uh, forced bump eating contest fatality, let's call it that way. Um, nice enough silver again, dry brushed all over and the little, whatchamacallit, what do you guys call it? Uh, we call it Lunte in German. I don't know what you guys call it, but you see it here. Uh, nice enough red paint on the very tip and you just put it in here. There seems to be a little groove system in the little arm and so um, it works well in his arm, looks nice enough, uh, cool idea, I think those fatality pieces are always cool. I think some, some more body parts would be nice, but um, the cool part also about this, this is hard plastic, this is soft plastic, and it tends to leave a few marks in here, but it's not a problem, it just pushes it out itself, so um, nicely done. Good call by Storm Collectibles. Final part is his spear which uh, has the nice matte grayish white on the rope, which works. Gray on the handle and silver on the spear itself. And attachment just goes by opening up the chest compartment. And you just push it in. No problemo, nice too. And while we're here, and I opened up the figure. Let's talk about the figure. We have nice color going all over it. Check the 360 guys. They went all out again. We have a uh, nice purple color on the armor all around, looking very, very cool. I think they've done a tremendous job on the, on the color. All around you should see there's a lot to it, even though it is a rather monotonous but so to speak. But uh, nevertheless, since we're back, let's call some uh, details. Like I said, the cool color on the armor, also on the head, um, is purple, kind of metallic-like, but uh, on certain uh, different light yeah, situations, the, the purple kind of goes into a silver and then into a darker blue. It looks beautiful, great job. Great silver paint on the head, a little bit of paint bleed here too. Um, little sail silver on the, on the tips of his hair. Also comes with uh, some uh, additional hair in case you lose some because they pull out quite easily. I tried that, I wouldn't recommend it. But it's not a real accessory to me. You know, it's, it's, it's a fan service. So that's, that's why I didn't put it to the accessories. Um, Paint continues throughout with the armor with uh, black accents on the deeper parts. Um, also here on the side pieces, on the bicep piece, on the gauntlet. Silver paint on the gauntlet, silver paint on the hands, on the belt and the little, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Uh, ninja groin guards? Let's call it like that. Uh, silver on the kneecaps and on the shin guards and more of that beautiful purple slash blue slash silver metallic mixture on the feet too. So that is all good and fair and works absolutely a treat. Great job, great detailing. Also with the pipes on the head here, I just saw before I forget that. So uh, that's, that's a good call. Um, also, a little bit going ahead of the articulation, but you can open up the chest compartment and unveil more details. 
uh, which is techniques from his inside with a lot of cable and we see red and yellow and blue and black and silver all in there which looks really nice with some finer cableage in there pretty pretty cool looks great closes off nicely makes for a good good clean closed up product articulation wise he comes packed like every storm collectibles figure we have the head on the ball pack that gets a little gapey in here all the way up all the way down the neck also again is with a vinyl cover over here which brings a good down and up in unison a uh, little bit of attitude stuff left right tends to flex back um, the armor is loose so you can uh, adjust it with any pose you see fit butterfly again going flex all the way to the inside to the outside little gape again here but uh, no one goes this far back so that's all nice with the grooves of the technic stuff in here that works quite well shoulder goes all the way around and due to the soft rubber shoulder pads you can move them out of the way quite easily going all the way up and the arm goes all the way around so um, all the possibilities for the arm you can you can think of so he can theoretically even throw a disc which is nice double jointed elbow pretty much the full run works nice bicep swivel before i forget and due to the pack on the hand he has a lot of articulation also in the hand also with some flex to the outside to the inside any uh, any way any direction which you like um, since there's this armor the uh, the app crunch is a little bit limited but not too much it works quite cool and we got a double we got one you see the seam here from the upper chest into the abdomen and from the abdomen into the waist uh, giving him a good bit and also teapot capabilities due to a uh, double ball pack from here into here from here into here from here into here so uh, you can have him pretty much hunched over almost all the way that's cool um, since the armor moves out of the way all the way you can have him do a great split to the front and to the side works quite well and since this is a new body or a newer body is essentially the same um, the same method it gets the full run on the knee which is cool also of course since it's all done here with ball joints you get somewhat of a thigh swivel around a universal also cool usual on the feet with a great rocker on the ball joint front back and also a toe tilt little problematic is the toe tilt itself now but for comparisons and for some like I now do it, I think I, that works really well. I enjoy that. Some articulation examples. We go to the back and I show it live what this guy can do, just a little bit. So let's just go through some imaginary poses. Like what if you would have some kind of a dash punch? Let's just take this fist forward, like somewhat of a um, perverted version of sub-zero you know then uh, you can pretty easily adjust everything you like and it works very very well also uh, his uh, flying uppercut like when those guys always teleport and move out of the ground super straight up da -da -da works just fine of course you can you can have him standing although i didn't actually try it ah, he still stands but uh storm collectibles also has uh, these action stands so you can still do it and the one little bit disappointing thing is uh, that the roundhouse kicks no longer quite work as before before you could just balance them on the little toe tilt adjust his head and adjust the arms and everything and then you could 
originally put the Storm Collectibles figures on their toe tilt, but I found it rather hard on this guy here. Always when I thought I had the, the point where he stands, he tilts to the other side. So um, I don't quite know what's the problem here. You see, he's almost, he's almost there, but not quite. So um, that possibility is sadly gone, but you can still uh, balance them on the foot as usual. As usual, like I said. So there you go. That still works, which uh, which is still nice. But uh, let's straighten this guy out and let's get into some comparisons. Here we got him with Baraka, which is a little bit, a uh, little bit tinier, just a little bit. And of course, with uh, a general of Baraka, here we got him with Prince Goro. So uh, he sure towers above him, but um, let's not also forget uh, Street Fighter. Street Fighter is a little bit of a different deal. So let's make some space and have Akuma in here. And uh, of course, this is a little bit away. So you see, he is a little bit higher than Smoke. That is because the Street Fighter figures are a little bit of a different scale. But of course, what's always interesting to many of my viewers is of course, how does he fare with Transformers? So uh, let me just pull this up a little bit and there you will see he is somewhat of Goro sized, meaning MP10 now. So uh, smoke is quite a bit smaller. Just so you know, these are way more like action figures. Still collectibles, nothing for toys, but way more like action figures. So there you got it, guys. Uh, Storm Collectibles uh, Mortal Kombat 3 Cyber Smoke, the NYCC exclusive. You saw those guys are are much fun. Also, uh, in the back, you can you can do a lot with those guys. So um, still good fun. Little little restricted, but only a little and a bit of pain. Bleed, but um, doesn't take too much from the score actually. Packaging, the, as always, the eight um, nice. Overall similarity in all the packages. You can have Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter in your little compartment where you keep them all and you will have a nice library. Appearance, as always, perfect. Storm knows what they're doing. All in all, overall, very cool. Except there's this one blemish, which is the Mortal Kombat 3 Scorpion, but that's another topic. Accessories, you saw it. Packed, great stuff. Not too much, not too less. Not something, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. I enjoy that. Materials, perfect. Nothing that broke ever on any of my storm. I heard reports on Goro, or I read reports on Facebook that the uh, ankle actually broke, but I had no problem on mine. You can work around it like uh, on Segat, what I showed you, where I showed the articulation and you can work around the, the actual uh, little heel in here and then you still have it. Uh, usual the rocker like the normal way so great stuff paint applications only a tad lower like I said a lot like in comparison the overall ratio from storm collectibles this has more paint bleed than on anything else all the bombs a uh, few of the hands a little bit on the head um, and I'm sure if I've searched more I will find more but um, this this is more really of an action figure um, it is Still a collectible, it's nothing for children, but it's more of an action figure like Hot Toys or something. Um, articulation, only thing that, that pulls off a point, but that was extremely uh, impressive on the other figures was the stiffer toe tilt and the possibility to have them standing on the toe tilt in a roundhouse kick. This is unfortunately not really possible with him anymore or a little bit, yeah, it's harder to, to do it you know so um that's a little bit sad but overall the armor and stuff doesn't restrict much so um still a great deal engineering of these guys are then of course perfect as always and the playability too 
with a star, as you see, because um, you can get a lot of it out of them with all the poses and the nice diorama. Those things are sure money, which brings us to the value. Um, of course, they come a little bit packing, a punch, I mean, price-wise. Um, the exclusives get expensive. You can actually pay a good bit for those guys. But uh, if you are patient, then you can get them for a good dollar. Like Sub-Zero is now being, um, it's, it's going for, I think with Scorpion together, somewhere like 400, 500 bucks. I got this guy for 100 cause his shoulder was damaged. But it still works, it was repaired. So uh, patience is sure a virtue here. Um, so the score makes it, makes it pretty makes it pretty clear uh, another home run by storm collectibles and i'm happy to have in my collection and i will absolutely get cyrex and sector 2 to have the cyber ninjas complete so there you go guys that was the today um i hope you check out our first episode of voice of can on the next channel next week um tomorrow like i said create hangouts with jeremy bennett <laughs> his nickname on the xbox one was actually the crunky monkey so um that's a little bit in the title too. Be on the lookout for that. And otherwise, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, please give me a subscribe. I would appreciate it. Click the notification bell so you will never miss another video of me. And until the next time, I just say, take care, be well. Till next time, bye.